Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Text Messages on the Parasite of the Show, Rick Tex. We're glad to have you here once again. We're broadcasting out of Elk River, Minnesota. It's January 3rd, 2019. It's a Thursday evening, and we um, it's kind of a bit last minute, but we did happen to set, set up our shop lights, so hopefully the green screen will be working properly. Now it was. A couple of the producers didn't, didn't show up today, so I had to sort of finagle it and put it together last minute. And... I mean, it's normally it's not a big deal to you know do hard work or put effort into things like that. But you know, I already had my suit on and I was ready to go and I was preparing with the with the news articles for the show and everything. It's just like, I mean, it's not it's generally not a good idea to to do work with your suit on because I mean they're just not made for it. And, you know, most of them are usually silk or wool, and if they get dirty, you you really can't clean them. So, I mean, to actually do physical work in a suit, especially if it's dirty work, it's just not a good idea. And it's just, I mean, I don't even know why somebody would do it. I mean, it just doesn't, I don't know if they're, like, trying to be funny or, or what it is. But, but it's just silly and, and pathetic. But, yeah, we, we hooked these shop lights up last minute and should be ready to go. Uh, the show should be running on eight cylinders then, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, we, did, uh, we did show you a while back how to create villain lighting. Which is usually, I mean, I don't want to mess around with it now, but a lot of times you'll notice when people are being interviewed, if they're, if you've heard the phrase before, cast in a negative light, usually side lighting and lighting from underneath would be villain lighting. Side lighting is mostly, um, you know, a mentally bad person or somebody who's up to no good. From the bottom would be a evil person. So from the side is probably more petty criminal, from the bottom is evil, killer, or pedophile, whatever the case may be. So that is something to look for if, if you ever watch watch TV in general and maybe movies, news, interviews, whatever, whatever the case may be, ladies and gentlemen. So it's just some more trickery that they like to throw in every once in a while too to sort of, you know, add some perspective to their narrative or to add a little bit of, of color to their to their easel or their painting. But, you know, yeah, we get, hopefully, hopefully the green screen will be working out. We'll be able to use it every single day because it appears to be a, a, a big hit with you, the ladies and gentlemen at home. And, and personally, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool, too. So as producers seem to enjoy it, uh, they're laughing and smiling. Now, the free video editing software, the VSDC, it se seems, to, seems to be a pretty good, pretty good system to operate. The program is pretty, fairly straightforward to use. It uses a chroma key, which is, you know, basically you... Enter in the green for background remover, and then you just stick a picture on, or hell, maybe in another movie. So maybe we could have another edition of Text Messages The Resurrection playing on the back screen while we're here filming the present version of Text Messages The Resurrection. So there's definitely um, a lot of things to do with this canvas, ladies and gentlemen. But with that being said, we want to get into, we want to tackle some of the tough topics on this, on this broadcast. One of the things mostly mostly related to health, pretty much anything is related to health because you can talk about all the sports you want, all the motivation you want, all the politics you want, all the religion you want. Bottom line, none of that means squat if you don't have good health. So that's why we focus on the absolute core foundational principle of living in general. The way I always saw it is there's three commodities to, that directly correlate to your standard high standard of living. Time, money, health. Everybody has a finite amount of time. How you use it is generally up to you. I mean, if you're a slave laborer or you are in a voluntary servitude, then you probably don't have much time. If you sit around all day and watch TV and eat Doritos, maybe you got a lot of time. And if you're a very productive person that squeezes as much as you can in your days as you, as you want, then it probably feels like you got just the right amount of time. And health. I mean, health if you don't have health, you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to spend money, you're not going to be able to be happy, you're not going to be able to use your time wisely. So, so, so good health is definitely, I mean, we don't really have any recommendations for, for good time and, and how to make money and stuff like that. I mean, we do have an enormous budget, but as far as how to make money, I'd, you know, I'd be the absolute last person to talk to as far as how, how to be successful with that. But, but as far as good health goes, we definitely, see... Uh, b based on my conditions, or maybe you could say opportunities, I would be very qualified. Back in the medieval days, they had food testers for the king and queen and prince and princess, princess Diana or whatever, and princess Kate or Meghan Markle. So we would have, 
they would have food testers back in those days. They would eat the food first to make sure they weren't poisonous or anything like that. So that would be something that I would be uniquely qualified to because due to the compromised digestive system, it would be it's super sensitive and it would be able to identify with a magnified, magnified precision any anomaly if, that are found in the food or, or poisons and toxins. More than likely, I would have probably been dead after a couple of months, though. But, you know, those couple of months would have been a very fruitful and productive ones. So let's get into the topics, ladies and gentlemen. Probably, we don't, we don't need to talk about, don't need to talk about myself here for too long. So, artificial sweeteners inside diet pro produces, artificial sweeteners inside diet products can destroy brain function. Now, you may have heard of monosodium glutamate, which actually can, penetrate the brain, the blood-brain barrier, and get in your brain and cause all kinds of a, of a ruckus in there. So it actually imitates some of the neurostimulants in your brain. It basically just takes it over and corrupts it. It's like uh, fluoride for your teeth. I mean, allegedly fluoride is healthy because it bonds your teeth, when in reality it's just a foreign substance that's bonding your teeth. It'd be like if you put super glue on your teeth and said it was healthy because it bonds your teeth. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So uh, monosodium glutamate is definitely that one, one of them falls in line with that sort of analogy. Aspartame causes oxidative stress that causes cell damage associated with inflammation, accelerated aging, and chronic disease. Aspartame is mostly in diet, like diet Pepsi, diet Coke, and it's in a lot of items too. Fortunately, they do require labeling it on the package, so anything you buy, you can look at the package and say, all right, that has aspartame. There are other artificial sweeteners too that are very dangerous, sucralose high fructose corn syrup. Uh, basically anything that produce, that has sugar in it, you definitely want to pay close attention to what the label says. I mean, not all sugars are equal. Sugar in a fruit or sugar in a starchy vegetable, for example, a banana, an avocado, a carrot, totally different than a sugar in some synthetic product like Soylent Green or Starburst, Fruit Loops, Laffy Taffy, Fruit by the Foot, you know, all this weird artificially processed garbage. Level of serotonin, GABA, and dopamine were reduced in rats being fed aspartame. Those are, I mean, serotonin you probably heard in correlated melatonin with, with sleeping, sleeping properly, proper relaxation. Dopamine is the, the pleasure center of the brain. So, for example, if people drink alcohol, they, it stimulates dopamine, but then it, over time, it clogs up your receptors and then you're not able to be overall a happier person. But when you get drink alcohol and get rowdy and inebriated and start stumbling around, then you're having an okay time. But by and large, over time, your potential, your ceiling of dopamine receptors diminishes with, with alcohol and, and aspartame as well, as these rats prove. And see, these rats make the ultimate sacrifice. Now, for people to just sit around and disregard these studies, it's the complete disrespect towards these rats that, I mean, yeah, obviously they don't volunteer to be in this position, but they happen to find themselves in this position and they've made the ultimate sacrifice so that we could understand better health. So to just ignore the efforts that they put into their existence would be more or less a slap in the face. Aspartame also caused higher levels of noroepinephrine and acetyl, acetyl, acetylcholine, which are stress hormones. So if you say somebody's in your neighborhood with a machine gun and they're mowing down trees and everything, it's going to cause you a lot of stress. And that's basically just by eating aspartame, it does that same thing. Except you don't really understand where the stress is coming from. A lot of times you'll hear about people that say they're under anxiety, but they have no real reason why. Generally because of the food they eat or the products or the chemicals in the air and the atmosphere or the Maybe the clothes they have are some artificial dyes. Maybe they're sleeping on some mattress that has dangerous chemicals on it in the interest of anti-inflammables. Anti or, you know, maybe they're exposed to some power lines that have dirty electricity or they're, um, maybe they installed some kitchen cabinets that are offset, off-putting formaldehyde in the air. There's a lot of things that could be bad for you, the ladies and gentlemen at home. See, we're, we're just trying to put out fires as they come up. I mean, there's about 30 brush fires around us now. We're just running around trying to stomp out as many as we possibly can, throwing fire blankets on them and getting some, getting the garden hose fired up and spraying water on them. Maybe getting a hammer and a chisel and knocking off the fire hydrant and dumping that on it too. So, so we're just trying to do the best we can. Yeah, there's a lot of things that could be deleterious to your health, and aspartame is certainly one of them, as proven by these rats that, that make the ultimate sacrifice. And what they also found that the scientists were, were 
a little bit concerned with is that a higher dosage produces more profound effects. So a lot of times with these dangerous chemicals, you'll get to a certain point and your body will start to feel a tolerance for it, like alcohol. And then it'll fight it with the immune system. That's the idea behind vaccinations. You build up an immunity, your body builds up the white blood cells, the defense mechanism, and it attacks it. But with, with stuff like aspartame and sucralose and high fructose corn syrup, your body is directly correlated with the amount of dosage you have. So it does not build up those defenses. It just continues to erode away at your, at your brain function. So the more and more you drink and eat over time, the more and more you're gonna feel the horrible effects. And it tripled the risk of Alzheimer's. So what they found is that people who people who generally consume you know a certain amount of diet beverages per day or aspartame containing products, they had they were usually on average maybe thirty percent of them would develop Alzheimer's, whereas the other people it was something like ten percent. I don't remember what the exact numbers were on the study. What was something around that line? Uh, rats had higher insulin, the rats that were fed the aspartame had higher insulin resistance, blood sugar, disrupted gut bacteria, lower body masses, and it's assumed to be, car it's uh, not assumed, it's considered carcinogenic, which is cancer causing, more or less. I think with aspartame it's 200 times sweeter than sugar. So I mean, you could say, well, you could put one two hundredth of the amount of aspartame and still get the same effect as sugar. And yeah, you probably could, but most of the time companies don't really do that. They just sort of dump it in and call it good and put some plastic that contains BPA around it and call it a product that's consumable and market it as a perishable or as an item that can be eaten. And it's usually taxed too. That's always the a bit of irony when you're buying sugar and these other synthetic artificially produced food products. They're usually taxed. If you're buying something that's taxed, you probably, it's probably not a, a bold or a prudent strategy to consume it because, you know, any real food is not taxed, you know, clothes isn't taxed, even, well, gasoline is taxed, but bottled water and you know, stuff like that isn't taxed, but, but, you know, sugar, water, candies, always taxed. Uh, and, and, and there are a lot of foods that are extremely dangerous too that are not taxed. So just because it's not taxed does not automatically entail or mean that it's healthy. So there's also that pitfall as well. But it's just a general guideline to follow. Um, and one other thing we wanted to talk, well, we wanted to touch base on today bef before we call it good for the show. Chinese scientist creates world's first genetically modified children. Uh, they use the CRISPR-Cas9 cut and paste DNA uh, what that is is identifies certain DNA that's susceptible to viruses and then they're able to put that in embryos and say all right well this kid isn't going to get this virus anymore you know it's not DNA that'll give you four arms or three eyes or anything like that uh, the CRISPR means clustered regularly interspersed short palindronic repeats and apparently it's uh, pretty controversial a lot of the scientists were unaware that a lot of the other scientists around the country are unaware that they were utilizing this strategy and testing on actual humans. In reality, it's probably something that's been going on for decades, but it just, the fact that it slipped up in this conference was a bit shocking and maybe a slight glitch in the system of global list control or whatever you want to call it. But I mean, the fact is, just the whole genetically modified thing, especially humans, it's just man trying to play God. Yeah, they may be well-meaning and well-intentioned and think they're smart guys and everything too, but the complexity of a human, just a single cell inside a human, is vastly more powerful than pretty much the smartest computer programmers could ever figure out. And that's just really a very dangerous proposition to get involved with that. It is definitely something that, I mean, yeah, it is good to challenge yourself and to intellectually stimulate yourself and find new mental mental obstacles that need to be overcome but this may not necessarily be the best path to go down ladies and gentlemen I and mean, like for example maybe you want to make a um, an electric car or something like that that would probably be a better use of time than to try to inject DNA into embryos and, and seeing what happens 
Oh yeah, they cloned a sheep a long time ago too, and probably cloning humans now, and whatever, the, whatever they, uh, freezing DNA and egg cells and all this other weird stuff too, so. Yeah, things are definitely getting out of hand, a little bit out of control, but yeah, you know, yeah, maybe that's better than sitting around all day and watching Doritos. But but you know, there there are always there is always collateral damage. I mean, who? Yeah, I suppose it would be a little bit of prestige to say you're the first person ever to get some DNA injection, but it, used on a wide scale, it probably it, there isn't really doesn't seem to be many positive effects that could result from it. So. It's a bit unfortunate to end on a little bit of a somber note tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but, but we're going to have to do that. And it sounds like we'll probably be back probably this weekend to film another broadcast. And, and hopefully things will be running on eight cylinders. We'll definitely be uh, looking more into some researching some more health articles and hopefully making Elk River great again. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we salute you. We thank you for tuning in each and every random day that we decide to film. And good night.